music. Banjo button commence. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Metacast podcast. As the podcast that improves itself, improves ourselves, and improves the self in general. My name is Ty, I'm going to be your host, and I'm joined today by my self-centered co-host, Distance. And uh, tonight, we are going to talk about um, myself. So it's, I mean, it's interesting. It, it, the weirdest thing is you chose the subject for this, I, this episode. So I didn't expect you to want to do an entire episode on me, but I, I mean, I think it's cool that you did, though. So I guess um, to start, I was born um, in a little town outside of Pittsburgh. Um, it was actually a small town in northern West Virginia. I lived there until I was about the age of five. Um, I don't have many memories from that small town because I don't think we, we formed many memories before the age of five. Um, but I went, to, I went to preschool there. I went to kindergarten there. Uh, I, think, I feel like this is going to be a lot of just me monologuing and you listening if we're talking about myself the entire episode. Ty, but, it, was, it was like saying the general you. It's the, gen the, the general myself. Did, did you like prepare an I wrote, essay about your... I wrote my memoirs. What? <laughs> I wrote my, my entire autobiography. I well, thought maybe no, we no. should just publish it then. And <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm uh, fucking around. No, I, I know it's about I, like the idea. I know, I was, just, <laughs> I was just playing into it. I wasn't sure. Like, I was like, okay, is, is, this, is this real? Your pants are so dead. When you well, do the deadpan, I'm like. And also, like, I have been so fucking swamped with work that it's like, we, we haven't been talking a lot, like, when we normally do in off time. So it's like, I, we haven't really touched base about this episode a lot. So I thought it'd been pretty funny to kind of like show up and be like, yeah, let me just act like I completely misunderstood what we're doing. But, um, but no, for, for the actual intro, um, let, let's, I, I want to let you take the, take the intro. Cause this was, uh, your idea. We're going to do, um, this, this episode and the next episode will be, um, related a little, a little together. Um, but yeah, so what are we, what are we talking about tonight? What is, what is myself about? Well, I, I think that it's, it's about the fact that that so many of us get so wrapped up in who we are to other people and what obligations we have to others, be it um, uh, a partner, um, spouse, uh, p parents, uh, coworkers, friends, that a lot of the time we end up putting all of our energy into them and never – really doing anything to maintain ourselves and it kind of came to light for me because you know i mean you know but um our, our viewers don't my uh, girlfriend who i actually started dating around the time we started this podcast yeah um, she and i broke up recently um and it was difficult for me but i realized that I had been focusing so much of my energy on her and um, what she was trying to do to be a better person that I almost kind of forgot about myself. And a lot of people do that, I think, with different obligations. And like I said, kids, coworkers, um, friends too, like people end up getting in this, like they're helping everybody else, yet they're stagnant. And yeah. That's the thing is that the awful truth that I feel like I, I need to come clean about is that we've been doing this self-improvement podcast for the last year almost. Yeah, right about. And yeah. for the last year, I have not been at my best. Yeah. There's a lot of subjects we've talked about that I've, I'd worked on before. Yeah. And I was, I had, I was okay with that stuff before. And there's things that I, a lot of the things that maybe I'd stopped being so great at or trying as hard at. And there's a lot of episodes where I just, I, don't, I can't name specifics, but there's a lot of episodes where I just know that I probably didn't apply a lot of the concepts we were talking about to my life, even if I'd done it before. Yeah. So, I just realized that I had lost myself in this whole thing. And when we, after we broke up, we had a brief conversation later where I told her that 
you know, you've never seen me at my best. Hmm. And after I said that several days later, actually even a week or two later, I realized if I wasn't at my best, it wasn't a bad thing for her to have never witnessed it. Hmm. It was a bad thing for me to have never been it. Yeah. And, yeah. and just like all kinds of stuff, man. Like I, I was acting like somehow the things in my life were reasons to not not be the best version of myself like yeah so i'm an it person and we had a cyber attack at work and that was super stressful and then we had a, like an office renovation project where i ended up having to do a whole bunch of cabling work to save the company money while doing my actual job and then the the whole you know coronavirus thing happened and um yeah. I've just been making excuses and I have decided that I won't let this happen again. Okay. That good, if I'm good. in a relationship with somebody, I can't just like put all my energy into them. Yeah. Because what fucking good am I to anybody if I'm not being better myself? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And that that's that's and, the weird catch twenty two of it, is it's like you're trying to do something uh, almost selfless. But by doing that and by neglecting the self, you are helping them less. <laughs> like, like you, the, the goal is to help them, to be there for them, to do something for them. And you're, you're not being there as your best you, which is actually doing them a disservice. Yeah, I, I get what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. And there's like, um, there's a, an audio book I've been listening to by um, Ryan Mickler called Sovereignty. Okay. It's kind of a, a rough read or a rough listen a lot of people would probably be put off by a lot of the stuff in the book hmm. but he, he talked about a point where he was kind of at rock bottom he really let himself go and his kids asked him to go jump on the trampoline with him but he was so out of shape that he was incapable and hmm. he told the kids like i can't yeah as in not like he physically couldn't and at that point he realized i need to change something so he decided to get on it and, you know, start, you know, taking care of himself and focusing some energy on himself and, and mm -hmm. being better, um, you know, and, and it's, it's funny because I think a lot of people do this thing, especially with, with romantic relationships, you get into one and you just like lose yourself completely. But it's the same thing with kids, you know, people, parents are a mile a minute all the time, you know, mm -hmm. Like my, my sister, you know, like her kids both play sports. Um, one of them's in Boy Scouts. Um, and I mean, when, you know, before everybody was kind of sitting at home because of the, you know, COVID-19 business, mm -hmm. I mean, she was on the go all the time. Her and her husband, like running the kids one place or another. Yeah. And, you know, then you also, you, ne you neglect your, with kids, sometimes you end up neglecting your relationship with your partner. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you also end up kind of neglecting yourself too. And we'll even do the same thing like at, at work where we'll get excessively like self-sacrificing, helping other people with their responsibilities to where we neglect our own. Yeah. I do that way too much. I, yeah. it is so hard for me not to say like, no, you know, let me, let me show you where to learn that. And Go do it yourself. Like I, I so often yeah. just like over, <laughs> like overstretch myself. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll get you that report in a few days. Like da da da. And then next thing I know, I've got thirty extra things on my plate in addition to my normal daily tasks. It's like, why the fuck am I doing this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of us have done it. I know I'm guilty of that at work. And I mean, it's the same thing with friends. But I, I can say one thing about you that I think you do really well, as okay. far as this goes is that you're very, you are very assertive about what needs to get done in your life. So if, uh, if someone's trying to hang out or whatever, and you have something that needs to get done, you'll, <laughs> you will say, look, I, sorry, I got to do this. You know, like I, I have to <laughs> get this, get this task finished or this project completed. Or <laughs> However, I need to go like, lift weights. Sometimes the I priorities aren't the best because it's like, look, I really need to do this thing in World of Warcraft. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the priorities may not be the best, but I am, I am good at saying no. I'll give you that. Yeah. And you know, like it's funny because this whole thing came from a place of extreme sadness mm -hmm. and serious despair at, you know, the, the loss of somebody in, in my life that was important to me. But the thing is that I recognize that it, 
that relationship wasn't good for me. Hmm. And it wasn't necessarily her fault. I mean, it takes two people to make something work and two people to screw it up. Yeah. So we're equally responsible in different aspects of it. Sure. But for me, I'm a big I'm a big part of that responsibility that that wasn't really good for me because I essentially made myself her life coach instead of her partner. Yeah. Yeah. And and in some ways there was still like that, you know, like like um that uh you know like relationship thing there but there was this this other thing and it was funny like i even told her that she didn't challenge me but there were times where i just wouldn't even fucking let her true exactly like i'd say yeah. i need to change this thing and then she'd be like oh what are you gonna do i'm like oh, i'll handle it yeah and i could have actually taken that opportunity to tell somebody so they could hold me accountable exactly so that's yeah. completely on me like she tried to help or to like be supportive or push a little bit, but mm -hmm. I just didn't let it happen. And I've just come up with excuse after excuse. I've been drinking too much. Um, and too often. And now I'm just like done. Like, you know, you and I had a conversation a while ago that, uh, my, me consuming alcohol is at an absolute minimum. It's like a social thing if I'm hanging out with somebody, mm -hmm. but even then probably not because mm -hmm. I don't feel like I can be the best version of myself. And also, be like drinking all the time and yeah. you know i've been you know really down about being stuck at home and a lot of people have done this but guys it's not funny stop it yeah. this is pathetic we shouldn't be making jokes about how we're dealing with this situation by getting drunk at home it's <laughs> it was cute to begin with but we should be stronger and better than this yeah. all of us should this isn't this all the stuff that we that we keep saying all the fucking stupid marketing bullshit that all the companies keep throwing out there about us oh, yeah. somehow being able to be together in this while we're apart none of us are fucking doing that and you know i get it maybe some of us are so bored now that we're actually talking to our family members <laughs> i am yeah. that's cool but you know that's that's the thing and i'm i'm you know i'm sorry to be so heavy-handed with the world <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're all dealing with this shit yeah. and and i appreciate the humor like i get it you know like the video where it's like i saw one of someone it was a shift change and they moved their coffee cup and then put a beer can oh, in the shot yeah. instead at five yep. o'clock yep. that was funny but it's the fact that we we need to recognize that it, it, it they are just jokes but the reason why everybody thinks it's it's humorous is because we've experienced this, but I just, I just realized like this, there's no reason to like use this as a, as a, as a, 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 a what, an excuse, I guess that, that it's not, it's not rational. Like that, you know, we're stuck at home and, it, and it's funny, like maybe listening to this later will be interesting to hear because mm -hmm. of, you know, In what, different context. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's and it's the same thing. Um, we, that, which we are getting to the point where things are changing some. Yeah, like yeah. We're start, th things are starting to open up. We are like, yeah. I'm like, you're even going out like to the range and stuff. So at least it's like, it's gotten to the point where there's some um, life outside of home, I guess, or something. Yeah, but but yeah, it is still like very kinda, different. Kind of yeah. normal. And I'm really hoping that what happens from, from all this is that we start to hate being at home mm. and we stop being homebodies mm -hmm. and we get out and we do stuff and we get active and we actually create a, a community because we don't fucking have that yeah true, <laughs> like true. it's not really it's very very the the individualism in 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 like uh, our culture is, is kind of out of hand i think mm. it's gotten to the point where we're like just little pods and see that's the thing that's the thing that you look at with like with churches is that a church is a community center mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be like a, what that when everybody kind of had a homogenous sort of belief then that was just a place where you could go and like make friends and meet people now yeah church is just a fucking building full of posers mm -hmm. and i'm saying this because like i've dabbled in christianity i considered myself a christian for a few years um that's another conversation for another day folks yeah. um but there's just so much like and i took it seriously when i was and i just saw like how Hey, I'll pray for you. How many fucking times do you say that to people and not? Yeah. And you know, you see them on Sunday and that's it. Well, we should be taking advantage of that. Like if you're if you're in that place with those people, 
then like you know get involved in other people's lives like be a community like stop calling the church a family and start acting like it Hmm. um and the same with companies i mean there's so many people that are like i'm just here to get a paycheck yeah that somehow somehow being impersonal at work is professional it's not yeah i don't Uh, i don't understand that and where it's like almost like like almost animosity between coworkers where it's like, dude, we're, we are here to work together. You know, it's like, I don't, I, you yeah. don't have to like be friends with everyone, but it's like, we have a, we share a yeah. common goal here. What is the point to like have this almost like enemy that you sit across the hall from that you're both trying to get the same thing done. You're both like working towards like, yeah, I don't know. That's just so weird to me. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And yeah. to, to circle, to kind of take that back to the, the subject at hand, like I was, the reason why I went there is because it's like because there's a lack of real community, like a real community in the majority of places in the United States, especially the larger cities, mm-hmm. um, there's no reason for us to get any better because we're not helping each other. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to create any value in ourselves to be be worth something to others to help them out or give them some kind of value in a, in a way that's beneficial to their lives. You know, I, I, everybody has a strength, everybody has a talent. And if we can double down or triple down on those talents, then we can be very valuable to other people and actually serve each other as a community. And, you know, once again, this is probably just fucking hypocrisy. I'm going to say all this shit and run my stupid little mouth. (laughs) And I'm just going to go back to doing this shit exactly the same way as before. Uh, But I I don't know. The the first step is realization, right? Yeah. I mean, I hope I don't, but do that. But for me, it's like, I I need to, I got to figure this whole me thing out because a lot of us, like if you're in a relationship now, like, and you're listening, like watch out, you know, like don't, don't fall into that stuff because it's going to mess things up. Well, there (laughs) is putting too much energy into your relationship. You end up like making, making the relationship less fulfilling, I think. Possibly. Yeah. Well, there is like circling back to one thing you said earlier. Um, you were talking about like in, so in a relationship, you kind of lose, um, I don't, I don't want to say like the sense of self, but you lose that solidified idea of yourself that you had independent yeah. of this relationship. And you kind of start to change. You start to, you start to become yeah. more for the other person, I guess, for, for lack of a better way of saying that. Um, but it's like, I, I kind of wonder though, is that, is that necessarily bad? Like to a certain point, of course, you don't want to lose all of yourself, but it's like, I almost look at like the ideal relationship as being two people that, which I mean, of course, like, again, ideal relationship is this like pie in the sky, kind of like utopian idea, but it's like the idea of two people like changing enough to become better versions of themselves together by the interaction rather than like needing to make sure they're keeping this like rigid, independent, like, no, this is me and I'm not changing to... To, to, you know, like become to fit to you better. But it's like, I almost see that it's like, it would be better for both people to change some bit to fit together and become this, this unit that was actually like more than the sum of their parts, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, like a Venn diagram thing. Yeah. It's like my stuff, your stuff, our stuff. Like this is, this is where we, we, uh, we rendezvous. This is the common place for us. And then, you know, gotcha. you do this and I do that. And like, I have my thing and you have your thing and there's, there's boundaries in certain places. And like, uh, but you know, like a lot of the stuff I'm talking about for me, it's like, it's kind of like almost like a weird, like codependent thing. Yeah. And it's like not so, healthy. So, so and, you're saying more like making sure the Venn diagram allows itself to overlap a little bit. You don't want to have the two separate circles, but you also don't want it to combine into one circle where you're right, just yeah, like, and, gotcha. Okay. And you don't want to have the wrong stuff listed in the center, you know? Yeah. Because it's important. It's important for people to have their like own friends and stuff like that too, and also hobbies. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of a lot, and that's another thing too is that if you're in a relationship with somebody and you have hobbies and interests, that makes you interesting because you got Mm -hmm. stuff to talk about. And if that person cares about you, they'll be interested to know. You know, they'll want to hear about that stuff. And I do like the thing that you said about you know being like better together because Mm -hmm. there are some ways that. There are some ways where you really should allow your partner to change you. Like if something really yeah. sucks about you and they help you figure that out, then you're not really letting them change you. You're deciding to change because they have given you something valid that you can use to make yourself better. Exactly. But, yeah. But on the subject of children, 
there isn't there isn't really anything much that they can do for you hmm. uh, as a as a parent. I mean, you know, you do have like moments of of uh, fun and and joy and and pride from being a parent, and that's cool. But you know, they are taking that's all that they do and that's Mm -hmm. okay that's fine that's normal that's what they're supposed to do exactly yeah that's how they survive but you we also need to like you know parents need to make time for themselves and it's so funny because you'll see people that don't have kids like us sometimes Mm -hmm. they'll look at people that do and somehow think they're shitty parents because they don't completely sacrifice everything for their children yeah Uh, yeah that yes having kids does require sacrifices being a parent Mm -hmm. requires sacrifices and i think that's one of the ways that having children can not necessarily make you happy but it can certainly make you a better person Mm -hmm. um and really i don't know that we exist to be happy i think we exist to be better and to fulfill some kind of purpose in life um but then that's another problem is that if you put too much energy into your children and you completely neglect yourself well when they're out of the house you have the mother of all existential crises yeah the whole like emptiness syndrome really sets in right and that is that is a a shit place to be um you know and and it's funny because if you like on the subject of work too if you look at the People that are more self-sacrificing at at work, like Mm -hmm. helping their colleagues with things, they don't tend to get promoted particularly high in the organization as opposed to the people that are more selfish about their duties. Yeah. But those people, the ones that are actually helping out in different areas and doing people, you know, favors and stuff like that, they're better for the organization. Yeah. But, (laughs) but unfortunately it's, it's like a lot of times better to stay at that position. And there's like a disincentive to promote or, or like get that employee, you know, like moving up the chain. It's like, well, no, we need you working in this position where you're doing this stuff for other people. And and to me, it's like if if they want to do that, that's fine. But there should be some incentive. Like that employee should, you know, get a, you know, some. It's like let's keep this person where they are and pay them more. You know, because that's what they because they're valuable to the company. That's how you express value to your employees. Like you don't put pizza in the break room. You pay them. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, pizza in the break room is nice, but you know, it's like money money in the pocket is is nicer. Yeah, yeah. unless you're trying to like lean up or whatever, um, or get in shape, then pizza's a terrible thing it's kryptonite <laughs> um but and you know it, it, it can be the same thing for friends too i mean interesting though before we want to leave the, the the subject of children um i'm i'm excited so so uh coming up in a few weeks we are we are kind of switching gears with the podcast and we are going more to what we've done the past few weeks of like discussing and and kind of breaking down movies and talking about um how they made us feel and what we learned about ourselves from the movie. Um, one of the movies that we've talked about discussing recently that I, you said you had not seen yet is one of my favorite movies ever interstellar. Have you, you haven't watched it yet, right? Mm-mm. Okay. There yeah, is I, was, a, I was waiting until right before we talked about it. <laughs> good. Okay. There is a, okay. there's a big theme in that movie that kind of goes along with exactly what you're talking about. As far as like the focus shifting from yourself when you have children and kind of shifting to the child and almost like forgetting about yourself and everything. So it's like, I'm really excited to hear your take on, on what, you know, what, where Christopher Nolan goes with that in that movie and everything. It's, it's just really, oh, it, it lines a Nolan lot. Film? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Oh shit. I feel like you, I feel like you told me that the first time we talked about it and I was equally surprised. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's definitely my definitely my favorite Chris Nolan. My my second favorite is the cl- of like very close is Memento. I love that one too. That's a good movie. I actually like that one a lot. Um, but yeah, that that's interesting. I didn't. Um, I'll be I'll be interested to see that then. Um, I don't want to go like too far into it because it's like it's not it's not like a spoiler or anything, but it is kind of like the the lesson is not explicitly said to you until later in the movie so i'd rather just kind of let that orga- organically happen than rather like go into it too deep now but it is like it does go along a lot with what you're saying and i'd be interested after we we watch that and talk about that on the episode i'll definitely like c- circle back to this conversation and get your kind of input on like how you feel about um i guess what well i guess i don't know if christopher nolan was the writer and director or just director but whoever the writer was it seems like they have an opinion on the meaning of that and, and if that's a good or bad thing that that i like i'd like to know your opinion on i guess too but okay yeah i'm, I'm intrigued now i'm interested to watch this film it's a good one um and you know like there's also this um 
you know, uh, on the subject of this, like, I, I, I'd like to be realistic too, because you can't, you can't always, all the time, be getting, uh, being all in on being a better person all the time. There's yeah. times where you you'll have other responsibilities and things that you need to get done where you'll at least be maintaining the kind of person that you are, but not necessarily gaining any kind of, um, and that there's times where you need to shift gears and go hundred percent on something. Like yeah. if you there's some crazy stuff going on at work and you just for a little while need to skew your focus toward work for a week or two and then go back to, can you see my cat? Mm, oh yeah, I can in the background. Yeah. A little bit. That's, that's <laughs> funny. That's oh, by it. the way, can you, can you see my cam today on whereby? Oh yeah, I can. Okay, I tried to. I I figured out. I didn't know why I never did this before. Um, I can create my so out of my broadcast software, I can create my camera as its own screen and then just share screen. So I'm not actually sharing my camera. I'm just sharing a screen oh. that is like. My, but it, yeah, it, it it works. It's like yeah, I think that's. I, I don't know. I just want to toot my own horn a little bit. I figured out a way to make that actually work. I kind of I figured it was something like that because of the other stuff like in the window that I'm seeing, but I mean it's fine. Oh, it's gotcha. Okay. I mean I'm not I'm not an audience member. It doesn't have to be super. So I was like I was like I wonder how he's doing that. Is it is it and like almost on time though? Is it not like super delayed or anything or like? Uh, it's barely. Okay. Maybe like a millisecond, probably uh, a little less. If you, um, if you can notice a one millisecond delay, I'm I'm very impressed in you. A lot. Maybe <laughs> it, it's like not that that off. Like it looks pretty instinct to me. My, my <laughs> robotic <don't>. co-host distance can, <laughs> <laughs> can detect a millisecond delay. <laughs> but you know, and but every now and then we do have to do that. Like that, you know, something bad happens. Your kid gets sick, and you yeah. have to focus a whole lot of energy on taking care of them or or your partner. You know, they're going through a tough time. Sometimes you just need to. You know, you do need to kind of neglect yourself a little bit, but when you have the opportunity, you need to get back on it and yeah. continue to be better and and not like sacrifice too much to the, the people around you to the point where you're no value to them. Um, yeah. Well, there is the interesting thing you're bringing up too, is that like, there's, there's always the idea of, um, okay, so what can I do for the, the greater good or for the, you know, the, the collective you know the, the 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 society the community versus like oh i should do this for myself because it's important to me and it's like like we talked about before which i think we'll talk about i guess in the next episode but it's like drawing that line between when is it appropriate to be selfish and do something for yourself and when is it the the right choice to do something for others and i mean of course like you know i mean I'm, every single topic we 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 um we look at comes to an idea of balance and there has to be some balance between the two you can't live a completely selfish life and it's ridiculous to live a completely selfless life there has to be some balance between the two but it is incredibly important to keep that idea of yourself that you hopefully value <laughs> um yeah. but, but keep that like uh true true and 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 stick to that and not let you know, situate like I feel, well, we do that so often. I mean, you've brought it up with with relationships, with, um, but we do that in in so many situations, even with just friendships and everything else, where it's like we let ourselves become what we think we need to be in that situation, whether it be you know your new friend. I mean, and just like this is probably like you know middle school or, or elementary school versions of this, but it's like oh, your new friend rides a BMX bike, so next thing you know, that's what you want for your birthday. And, you know, you're going to start to get into BMX. And it's like, you may have had no interest in that before, but all of a sudden that's, that's a part of your identity. And it may have just literally been pressure of like feeling like, oh, that's what yeah. would make me fit in, or that's what I need to be in this, in this situation or this context. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are times like where, when we were kids, like, I remember when we were all into like the metalcore music and like everybody was like wearing like tight band shirts and like, you know, uh, pants from the the girls section because mm -hmm. they were super tight and you couldn't find pants that tight. <laughs> um, I remember one time I showed up to band practice in a loose fitting soccer jersey <laughs> and some like khaki jinko like th like twill pants I had in my closet. Yeah, and like everyone was like, "What the fuck, man? What are you wearing, dude?" This it's is like practice, the same bro. thing. <laughs> It's the same thing, like, or like, why do you have a mud vein sticker on your case? That band's not cool to listen to. And exactly. I was just kind of like, exactly, yep. It's it's that kind of stuff, and and I mean, as long as 
sometimes your friends can get you interested in, in something that you actually want to do. Yeah, but of course. In the, in the, the case that you're talking about, it's like, you know, someone just doing it because they think it's, you know, the, it, it's what they think they're supposed to be. Yeah. It's almost and like that, a survival mechanism. A, it's like, how do I, how do I blend yeah. in? How do, how do the, like the predators will, will ignore me if I can blend into this herd. <laughs> And that's another problem that, you know, I've, I've had like in relationships with not, and not just romantic ones, um, and also being out of them, uh, that would be the romantic ones in particular, mm -hmm. but I, it's this idea of like the, what am I supposed to be? Yes. And it's like, what do you, what do you want me to be friend? What do you want me to be, um, parent? Um, you know, as, as, as an adult talking to your parents, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, who, do, who do you want me to be partner? And it should really just be like, be you. <laughs> yes, exactly. And try to be the best, best you, you can be. Yes. And then if people like that, cool. If not, well, who gives a shit? Um, and yeah. it's like, yes, to, I, to a point though. Yeah. Could, because there is a well, certain yeah, point mean, like, where if you realize, you know, literally everyone you come across doesn't like you for one specific reason, you know, it's like, well, hold on. There may be a sign that it's like, okay, do I need to take this reason into inventory and say like, okay, is this actually a flaw, not a trait? But yeah, I'm not talking about that whole like uh, zero fucks given kind of mentality yeah, where, yeah. you know, it's like you just tell everybody that they're, that they're, they need to um suck it up and don't be so sensitive and stuff like that mm -hmm. and you're making it about them being i mean there are situations where people can be overly sensitive but yes i, I mean i'm talking that specifically like if someone's kind of does some asshole type behavior you yeah. know there's a certain point that you have to get to like like you said like if it's for one particular reason and you can figure it up it out to be true yes and it's also not a good thing then maybe like don't be that way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that's another thing too. Is that it's not a good thing because you could just you could just have surrounded yourself by assholes and that everyone just doesn't like you because you're you know like you're too talkative or something like that. That it's like if it's an actual yeah. like bad thing, then that's that's something you need to address. If it's something that like you're irritating people just simply by being yourself, maybe maybe they're assholes. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's like especially with the romantic relationships, like there's a lot of in certain situations there's a lot of trying to push each other to be something different yeah. and if and like like you were saying just now like it's not like an objectively bad thing mm -hmm. if something about you just happens to annoy somebody well then you know that's and they're just trying to get you to like and in some cases like it's healthy to give a little bit you know it just depends on the thing yeah you know, it, if it's something if it's something trivial like don't leave time on the microwave it's like well i mean that's really silly that you have a problem with that but also it's not that big of a deal for me to hit the clear button. Exactly. It's also just so, as silly to try to defend yeah. it. So it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's yeah. no big deal either way. So like, if that's a situation where you choose to just be like, okay, fine, I'll hit the clear button on the microwave. That's weird that you, that's a problem, but whatever. But that's well, a common thing. Actually, a lot of people get annoyed by that. And that's also a situation where, um, the, the behavior is not at all like, like a trait or something you would consider part of you. You're not, you're not sacrificing any part of yourself to, you know, clear the microwave. <laughs> you right. know, like, I don't think, I don't think anyone values that as something that's part of them. And it's like, Oh no, no, I'm that type of person that leaves the numbers on the microwave. And I will not yeah. stop doing that for you. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, if there's one principle that I hold very dear, it's the leaving time on the microwave. That's just, it's not negotiable. It's, it's a, Sure. It's a virtue of mine. Short video idea of like a couple that everything's perfect except for that. And the guy, <laughs> the guy can't take that the girl doesn't leave. The, the opposite. It's not that like, it's not that someone gets annoyed that the numbers are left. Oh. It's that the other person gets annoyed that the other person clears the numbers. Like, no, you need Can to you... leave it at one second or I'm, or I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I asked you to do. Yeah, that yeah. Isn't it. That's all you've asked to do in this relationship. But if you can't do that, I just... I, everyone has a breaking point. Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta that's the, you gotta pick your red flags, and if that's if that's the you know if that's where you draw the line, if that's the deal breaker, I, I understand it. But no, but when it comes to stuff that is actually, um, where you, if you were to feel like you were um, compromising a part of yourself rather than just compromising trivial behavior, I think that's where where the point really stands, though. 
Yeah, like yeah. I mean, if for instance, you know, if um, what, what is like a good ex- what is a good example that a, a couple could actually like get to that point on, like something that is like a a, a part of someone that um. I mean, I've the example you gave, like I've dated people that have had a problem with me talking a lot and oh okay and if that's a problem that somebody has then it's like i'm sorry like (laughs) i guess let's not do this anymore because (laughs) that's just kind of part of who i am and uh you know um and and there's plenty of people out there that like it they're like i'm so glad you talk more than the last person i dated or i wish i wish more 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 guys would talk you know as much as you do like and if that's the case and then it's cool but like to me that's just something that's that's a personality trait for me like i i can use i can use less words in certain situations and communicate more concisely Mm -hmm. but that's something that i try to work on with like trying to work out a problem in an interpersonal relationship then in that yeah. case you need to be concise or working out a problem or communicating with somebody at work where we're collaborating or cooperating on trying to reach a goal together then i do need to try to whittle things down and use less words yeah. but yeah even then i feel like for the most part the many words i use are often chosen pretty carefully mm-hmm. um and another thing for me is that there's one of the there's almost nothing more valuable to me than being understood. Yeah, and, I, I agree with that. Yes, and that's like that's an important thing for me. That's why I, I speak a lot. Um, and also, like sometimes people get me started on stuff that I'm super interested in. Yeah, true. Yep. And I just I yeah I I can't like I just you know I go on and on about it and if, <laughs> and it gets to the point where they're a little annoyed I'm like oh okay I get it sorry yeah I know it's, it's, it's my thing and there's certain situations where I'm okay with that you know yeah and I've even told people that I've dated like look if you want to just jump right in and interrupt me when I'm speaking you go right ahead I will not be upset or offended like sometimes you just got to do that yeah and then after a little while they just start jumping in and I might like, see yeah, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's cool. Like, we're all I have no problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. I know that you need to do that. Like, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've that's been something that I've I've actually had to deal with. And and it really is just like I can't date someone that's an extreme introvert. Um, and for some fucking reason I, I end up like finding people that are. Um and like if someone's like way out there introvert, like that they just really, really, really need alone time, then it's just, it just doesn't work with me. Um, but there's ways that like they can get their alone time and I can go hang out with friends or go to a public place or whatever. Mm-hmm. But usually it's not really, eh, not really so much. Um, and that's another thing. It's just, that's one of those things where it's like, that's just me. So yeah, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. And it's one of those, like, I don't need to, I don't need to be different. I mean, let's just maybe not do this thing here. Yeah. yeah. I think that um, that's, that's, it, it takes a certain level of, um, and I'm not sure if it's confidence or self-acceptance or self-awareness or, you know, all of the above, but it takes a certain level of, of being okay with yourself to do that though. And I think that like the younger we are, the harder that is when you, when yeah, you're making new friends in third grade, there's no part of you. That's just going to be like, Oh, well this is who I am. And that's, you know, take me or leave me. You know, it's like, you're just gonna be like, no, what do I need to do to be part of this group? Yeah. I, I, will, I will do it. But, and then eventually and I mean, probably you like, hopefully come to an age where you yeah. discover like, no, like this part about me is okay. And it is not a flaw that needs to be addressed. It is just like, it is just part of me. It's a, uh, and and you know in third grade you're um you're you don't really have that much of an identity anyway yeah you know and you you're really kind of figuring out who you are and i think there's a there's a some individuals have um have like they they have a lack of identity as they get older and that Mm -hmm. never really goes away and it's actually something important because many people don't understand themselves and like Mm -hmm. people think that's fucking crazy but like there's times like with drinking there are times where people will drink and they'll drink often and they won't be thinking i am going to go drink so i can deal with the fact that my older brother hung himself which actually i know somebody that did that and they're not thinking that 
yeah. but they're going out and they're getting trashed and they're you know hitting the bottle excessively and then they might realize later that that's why they were doing it and they had no clue yeah um and so there's like a lot of really deep stuff that you you have to like get through or wade through or whatever to to figure you out um and that's another thing like not just being better but also not giving up on understanding yourself trying to understand mm. like what what you're doing and what you're going through and there's one thing um that uh what is it if there's if there's no enemy within the no if if there's no enemy within then no external enemy can hurt you yeah so, uh, like, something it, like it's that. this whole idea that like you need to continue to you can't make yourself your own enemy you have to be your ally mm -hmm. meaning that you you can't lie to yourself you can't delude yourself and if you do and you catch yourself doing it you got to change it yeah um and that's another thing is that you might end up being everyone else's ally and neglecting to be your own. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably way too easy to do too. And there's just some weird thing that I, that I thought today that was, um, uh, that we all pose ourselves a challenge as ourselves. <laughs> And you should really never back down from the challenge that is you. Because, meaning the challenge of understanding yourself, yeah, knowing yeah. yourself, and uh, making yourself a, a better adjusted, healthier, um, uh, mentally strong, physically strong. If if that's something that you know, and to some degree, that's important. Um, that we shouldn't, in some ways, if we put our energy into somebody else, then we're neglecting the challenge of being human. <laughs> mm. We're not we're not accepting the challenge of ourselves because yeah. we're, we're putting all of our energy into helping others improve or be better or doing things for them. And then we're not challenging ourselves within that much. Yeah. Cause yeah. I think it's, I think it's more challenging to be, to be better in every way yourself than it is to help somebody else do it. Well, and there's also, you've got more stake in it. You know, it's like, it's kind of true, like, it's true. way easier to try to help someone else. So, you know, it's like, if you, if you fuck up, it's just, oh, well, I wasn't able to help that person. Damn. Versus like, if you actually try to help yourself, and you fuck up, you can, you know, you can, you know, do, do some damage to yourself or your life. The, the, you know, the, the, there's actual risk there. Yeah, very true. Um, but I mean, I, the good thing about screwing up your own life is that it is yours. So <laughs> exactly. you, yeah, true. you don't have to be, you, you, you're not, um, um, you're not, uh, You're not gonna like screw up you, something that you're not responsible yeah, for. Yeah, like yeah, yeah like you, you're the you're the you're the device of your own fate anyway. Yeah, so yeah. then that way you know that that you know you you only have yourself to blame. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Which yeah, I I like that kind of. I mean, th there is something beneficial to um, kind of relinquishing that control and working with a group and knowing that it's like you know, hey, we're we're going to be responsible for each other's success and failure here. And knowing that, you know, there, there is a chance that I can do my best and still fail because of the people that are working on this with me. That is like, there is something beneficial to that. And I think that is like just the, like a microcosm of the human experience where, you know I mean? That that is kind of humanity in a nutshell is like, you can't just do it yourself. You know what I mean? Like there is like, yeah. the, we're part of this, this thing called, humanity and like you know the, a few of us can kind of fuck it up for everyone <laughs> you know it very it could, yeah. it, it really can like um so I mean, so like you know doing things that are that are group based can can i i guess be a um a way to come to terms with that existence and the fact that that is just kind of the way the way things are but it is also just very um i i normally prefer to to have control like that and that, that's i mean kind of why i stepped away from like doing music as a band and stuff like that where it's like it was annoying to like to know that it's like well these other people control my success like yeah yeah that was something that that kind of drove me crazy about being in bands too yeah um 
and you know it's but like you know i guess there is i I, I think that what you were getting at was that there is some power in putting yourself in those situations yeah because you're allowing yourself to cooperate and collaborate with other people well and it's Um, almost like a power in knowing how powerless you are yeah, because it's, I mean, it's cause, like accepting that, like, yeah, accepting that you just kind of have to go with it. Yeah, I mean, it's the idea, like one of the ideas that I'm that in that um, that sovereignty audiobook that I'm listening to right now, that he, he talks very much about like the idea of sovereignty, which is just that you have that over yourself. You know, that yeah. you have uh, well, let me look that up real quick. Yeah, so it's the sovereignty is like a self-governing state or a yeah. supreme power or authority, and you have sovereignty over yourself. Yeah, yeah, and your life. But he also stresses, you know, recognize that there are things that you can't control. Yes, and to be well aware of that, and then, um, and then you can stop wasting your time and your energy ruminating about stuff that you can't control and then focus on the stuff that you can, um, that, that the, you know, it's like, he actually even makes a joke about like, you're in control of everything in your life. That's like a nice phrase might make a good bumper sticker, but it's just not true. Isn't, isn't it basically the serenity prayer though? More or less, yeah. It's kind of like grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to the difference. Like it's sort of like that—that that yeah. idea, yeah. So it's like it's so crazy how it's like every every fucking great idea has already been said, and, and like and thousands of years ago too. Somehow, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny. Like if you look, there's a lot of stuff that, um, like authors and and philosophers and thinkers have been trying to tell us for like centuries. And if you read like old works, you can find out pretty clearly. There's a whole lot of shit. We, we still haven't gotten the point we haven't figured out. And people have been trying to tell us this for forever. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, like the whole materialism thing, there's a, there's a section in the um, uh, old Testament uh, Ecclesiastes, where he talks about how having stuff is not the way to go. Exa- yes. When even and just like yeah. thousands of years ago. Exactly. Even and as far as like even spending too much time online and on the internet, like there, the Plato wrote about that, about the dangers of like, if you spend way too much time on online forums, you're going to like be less productive at work and things like I'm just kidding. Plato obviously did not write about that. I couldn't. I couldn't keep that joke. Like away. that no. quote: "You can't believe everything you hear on the internet." Yeah, that's Abraham an Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I was like, can't, can't believe I was every like, quote read online. I was like, "How long is he going to do this one?" Like, Plato's a time traveler. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> but no. But it is like it is interesting how. Um, I mean, of course many things change in life like that. You know, we, we are living in a, in a world where we have to deal with a lot of things that much of humanity has never had to deal with as far as the technological advancements and stuff like that. However, yeah. the, the normal just existence of what it is to be human has not changed much at all. Like there are so many of the ph- philosophical writings from the past 3000 years it could be like the, I mean the, of course the translation may sound a little dated, but it's like, if you put it in modern day English, it's the same things we are still kicking around and trying to figure out and thinking about. Yeah, when people say the term these days or people now or people yeah. don't do this anymore, I'm like, I don't know that we ever did. Like, exactly. I don't really think that that's different. <laughs> yeah, like, um, did you ever see that? Um, it was like an image of a train car from like the 1920s. And it was just like, it. Ha- it you know, the text, of course, talks about like how in in modern times, people will, you know, say that like, oh, well, we shouldn't have gotten these cell phones because I missed the days where we used to actually talk to each other. And it's like a, tr- a, a photograph taken inside of a train car in the twenties and everyone has a newspaper in front of themselves. and They're all looking yeah. down, not talking. It's like, yeah, we did that already. Like just, just because it's a digital thing now doesn't mean that like, you know, a hundred years ago, we were all just interacting with every single person we walked by and everything. It's like, no, that's just how people are. I am fairly certain that an individual during that period of time wrote an editorial in a newspaper hmm. about how everybody on the train 
couldn't get their nose out of their newspaper. That's kind of funny. I'm not think, familiar with that, but that's kind of funny. I think that was uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, Adam Adam the Adam ruins everything, dude. Adam, I forget his last name. Oh I yeah. Think he, he did a, a presentation called Adam Ruins Millennials. <laughs> That's cool. At a, at a marketing conference that was supposed to be about marketing to millennials. That's funny. And he, t- he talked about that. And I don't remember who he, who he said it was that wrote it, but I'm pretty sure that's what he was saying. Hmm. But yeah, it's, I, I think you're right, though. It's just like, it's, I mean, like to, to sort of circle, circle back to the point, and I think that, that kind of illustrates it, is like we need to accept the things that are fundamental to being human and the things that are fundamental to being who we are. Yeah. Like there are things that are fundamental to being Thai and things that are fundamental to being distance that are not necessarily fundamental to being human, but are also like we're talking about, they're not things that we need to think of as like something that needs to be fixed. And so often that's, that's hard to do that, especially like, I mean, if you meet someone new that you are, um, attracted to in, in, in some way, whether it be like romantic physical attraction, or even just like you're attracted to this person's company, you, you respect them to some degree and you then respect their opinion, of course. And if there's something they may not like about you, you may take that as like an example of, oh, well, this needs to change or I need to address this because this person that I hold in, in, you know, high esteem or high regard doesn't like this. Um, but it's, it's like, it's hard to just accept that that is someone's opinion. And, and like, you know, and like we talked about, um, there is a way to discern if there is truth there and if it's something that actually needs to be addressed. But I think way too often we err on the side of just taking someone's, um, taking their opinion as, as fact and saying like, oh, well, okay, this person did not like this. I need to fix this. And I don't think that's necessarily always true. I think sometimes it's okay to just be who you are and embrace the things that, that maybe not everyone likes. And that's, that's okay. That's like, that's a tough thing that it came, uh, it took me like a long time to, to get to, because I wanted to be that, like that people pleaser for s- way too long. That was like, you know, um, if, if something about me rubbed someone the wrong way, that was something that needed to be addressed. And I've come to just realize that that's, that's just wrong. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a hundred percent true. Uh, th- there's you, because if you uh it's funny you can't please everyone all the time but you can piss everyone off all the time if you if you try hard enough but you have to actually try but yeah i mean that's i think the 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 other saying is um you can't please everyone all the time but i can please you for 30 seconds baby (laughs) 30 seconds. So that's a personal record. Yeah. That's, um, I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating by a little bit. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, it, there should be some, some degree of, of boundaries there. Yeah. And, and also like having some value for yourself. Um, and it's interesting that it's interesting to me, the places this conversation has gone from like the original, like the original, like, sort of introduction at the beginning like it's mm-hmm. it's kind of cool like where it's gone in in regard to this that you know and you know one really good way that i've i've found to figure out is if somebody dislikes you for something mm-hmm. and someone else likes you for the same exact thing then it's probably not a bad thing necessarily not always but in many cases if it's something that someone else likes you for and someone else dislikes then chances are that particular thing isn't really bad or else there wouldn't be anybody that thought that it was okay. It's, it's at least everyone debatable. you knew would say this sucks. And, and I mean, but it, there is a chance that there's one person that's just crazy and they just, they, they yeah, really but... like the fact that you torture kittens. You're like, well, this one person loves that I torture kittens. Yeah. So that means I don't need to change this about myself. <laughs> Must, I love taking things to the extreme. Right yeah. I just, I love, I love trying to do the, um, it's like, I think I got it from mathematics where it's like, you know how you like, you test a rule by always like taking things to the very far extreme and just seeing if it yeah. holds true. Yeah. So it's like, I always just love to do that. It's like, can we, can we take this to the absolute extreme and see if it still holds true? Yeah. At the, at the edge of reason, most things don't, exactly. um, which it's, is, which is why that's so fun to do. But it's like the, it's, um, you know, like in, in calculus, did anyone ever ask, like, when am I going to need this in real life? And it's like the idea of a number, like, 
you know, approaching zero, but never actually becoming zero. It's like, well, yeah, this is, that's kind of the real life version of that. Where it's like, yeah. <laughs> or like, I guess, how else is that? No, no, no. Sweeping dirt into a dustpan. That the line that it leaves, isn't that like real life oh, calculus? Yeah. Like it, it approaches zero, but it will never actually be zero. It's just every single time you scoop it back in, there's a smaller line. Like, <laughs> that is so unbelievably relatable. <laughs> That line makes me so mad all the time. <laughs> I just you know, scoot, scoot it across the freaking floor. Yep, and it's just like it's just uh, smaller each time, but never, never completely gone. But yeah, it is. I mean, it is just incredibly important though to to hold on to those things and not um, because I mean, like as 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 cheesy and silly as it is, like what is the what is the the hallmark way of it? Like variety is the spice of life, guys. Like the the little things that make us different is what makes humanity bearable. If we were all the same fucking person, it would suck. And if you let those little jagged edges of your personality that maybe rub someone the wrong way, but other people like, if you let those constantly get worn down by the, the interpersonal experiences and relationships that you have, everyone becomes just this, this boring lump that all the little, you know, all the little edges have been ground away. And that sucks. Like that, that's boring. We don't want every, we don't ever want him to be like smooth and round. We need those little edges that make shit interesting. Yeah, exactly. Lee. It, exactly. Lee just said like, it'd be, it'd be boring as fuck if we were all the same. And I think that that's a good way of wording it. It would suck. Like as much as you like getting along with people that have similar interests to you, you also like, there needs to be some difference there. I would not want to be friends with, with, you know, three clones of myself. That would suck. Yeah, I would I would not want to hang out with those people cuz I think that the thing that makes people interesting is that you you have a thing in common and then that's cool, but that person has a lot of other things about them that are not in common with you. Yeah. And that's like you participate and you discuss the thing you have in common and then that leads to the other things where you can actually be interested in the differences. Um yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny that this this actually kind of became a talk about boundaries too because it, yeah. it really is valid to the subject yeah yeah um, especially the way that like i kind of came about you know wanting to talk about it or arriving at it i, I think it's cool yeah so uh it's a very interesting place this has gotten and i'm i'm very excited about it yeah i do cool. i feel like it's been a good talk i mean well i i don't know I mean, we're not exactly the same true, exactly <laughs> yeah we have gone here <laughs> Um, I, I mean, in all reality, I did not prepare for this episode, like at, nearly at all. I mean, my, I've gone through everything that we had on, on my notes. Um, do you have any other, like, do you have anything that you re wanted to get to as well? Um, anything that we've not touched on yet? Uh, I mean, not really. It's just, I guess I would just want to kind of, kind of close things by, you know, clarifying that, you know, we're not saying to be completely closed off to everybody else and be hundred percent selfish all the time. Yeah. Um, we're just saying like, maybe we should all exercise some discernment and some balance in it. Yes. And, you know, use some judgment and try to rely on our wisdom of, you know, what we've experienced in life. Uh, and yeah. to just, to just never, never neglect yourself because that whole loving yourself thing sounds very what what they call frou frou is not the word they use for yeah, stuff like that. that yeah um it sounds kind of like that but it really is true you you gotta you gotta love yourself and that also includes tough loving yourself sometimes too which is actually something we talked about two of us talked about recently off the air um that i i recognize i need to do that for me too to tough love myself um <laughs> but really what it comes down to is just you know always taking care of yourself and pushing yourself while balancing the responsibilities you have for other people and maintaining healthy boundaries between you and those people. I think, um, I think it, it like really comes to, um, a good, like, I, I don't want to steal your quote because you know, like, I, Oh man, what did I, what did I do? Oh God. I tried to go to a scene that was not set up at all, but no, there's a great, there's a great Socrates quote. It's just the, 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 the good old, so 
but no, the, just the good old know thyself. I think it's like, like I, I've always been a huge fan of that quote. I think it's incredibly simple, but it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. That it is like, it is m much more, it, like it, it's just so important to really just, just literally know yourself. Like take inventory, realize who you are. And, and in doing so, you're going to realize the things that, that need to change the things that don't. And, and just in being, God, it's it like, it's so much, it just sounds like so cheesy, but it's like, like being who you are is, is precious because there's, there's only one of you and it's way too easy to let the world turn you away from who you really are. And, and, and that's just like, that, that's a really shitty thing. And it's like, it, it, the, the more people that are able to um to realize like who they are and and accept that and and keep those the like the, the the analogy i used earlier those little like rough edges through the the grinding process that is our like formative years i think the better so so really like the earlier you can get to like know yourself and, and take inventory of like who you are i i think the better the the, the world will be for everyone really agreed that's a very good way of putting that including the cheese <laughs> Um, well, uh, do you do you have a a quote for us this week? Yeah, this is actually uh, an anonymous one. This is from one of those posters with like a sunset on it. So <laughs> we're just <laughs> nice. gonna pile on the cheese this week. Nice. Um, but I do like this one. Um, be a witness, not a judge. Focus on yourself, not others. Listen to your heart, not to the crowd. We have reached the end of another episode of the Metacast podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube and you've enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up to date, and comment below and tell us your opinion on yourself, the, the idea of yourself. Uh, if you're interested in further taking part in the conversation or even joining us as a guest on a future episode, please join our Discord. The link is in the description down below. And uh, we will be live next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday on twitch.tv slash TV. Thank you guys for listening, and I hope everyone has a great week.